Hi, I'm Andrew, and in this presentation I'm going to introduce the paper Spatiotemporal Reference Frames as Geographic Objects. This work stems from an issue I encountered during my PhD, analysing AFL player GPS tracking data. Specifically, the data was provided to me in absolute latitude-longitude time coordinates. But in order to perform meaningful analysis, I first had to convert those into coordinates relative to the football field. So for example, 20 meters from goal. Although I found a solution for my particular data set through writing a series of custom Python scripts to wrangle the data into the format I needed, in this work, I've tried to take what I've learned and turn it into a reusable solution that could be used by, for example, the sports performance analysts or sports coaches who may not have a geospatial or software engineering background. So I'm going to start out by explaining that motivating scenario a little more clear. Then I'm going to look at existing sport GPS analysis software and point out some of its limitations. I'm also going to look at general purpose geographic information systems to see if they can fill in the gaps. And finally, I'm going to introduce our system and give a demo of that and hopefully convince you that our system is better. So as a motivating scenario, I'm going to elaborate on some of the problems I faced when trying to compare AFL player GPS traces as part of my PhD project. My project is attempting to apply machine learning to find strategic patterns in the player's GPS tracking data. However, the team only scores a few times per game, which means a single match alone isn't enough data to find interesting team patterns. In order to build up enough data set to mine more interesting patterns, I need to take data from multiple games and aggregate it. However, the issue is a team can potentially play at a different venue each game. So as an example, they may play at the MCG in Melbourne one week and then at York Park in Tasmania the next week. And each field is obviously at a different location, but they're also orientated different ways. So MCG is generally east-west, whereas York Park is more north-south, but not quite, it's actually on a bit of an angle. Making comparisons between the absolute GPS tracking data makes no sense. So for example, the bull there in the York Park Stadium versus the Melbourne Stadium would be hundreds of kilometers away and many months away. That's why in order to perform meaningful analysis, we first have to reproject relative to the local coordinate system of the football field and then comparisons within those local coordinates between different games makes more sense. So for example, we could say the ball is one meter away from the goal and five minutes into the game. Makes a lot more sense, is more intuitive and should hopefully allow the machine learning algorithms to pick up on those interesting patterns rather than for that initial transformation to be something the machine learning has to learn, which chews up valuable processing time and will mean that we'd have to provide it with a much larger data set if we wanted it to pick up on that transformation automatically. So I'm pulling these spatio 
temporal reference frames and the reason that they're temporal and not just spatial is that time also needs a reference so we want to say five minutes into the game not the current time is 9.05 p.m. and although adjusting for those time offsets may seem fairly trivial unfortunately a lot of systems will work with either spatial data well or time data well but not both so for example geospatial information systems handle spatial data very well but often neglect the time component similarly the systems for time series analysis which can deal with all that temporal data but they'll often neglect the spatial aspects. So let's begin by looking at existing sports GPS analysis systems. The heat map you can see on the slide there was generated using SPT Game Tracker, a GPS system designed for sub elite teams. And as you can see, it generates a nice heat map overlaid on Google Maps but there are some issues around using this to make comparisons between different games. Specifically, the maps are all north orientated, which makes it hard to make comparisons between fields that are orientated different ways. And furthermore, because it's all in world coordinates rather than local coordinates, it's very difficult to make quantitative comparisons. I also tried out GP Sports, which uh, targeted more towards elite teams and used within the sports science units here at Deakin University, but found a similar issue. Their maps are all north orientated and inconsistent center points. So while GPS Sports does give out quantitative values, it's zero point I found tended to be just the minimum latitude and longitude that any of the players happened to visit, which made it very difficult to make quantitative comparisons between different games played at the same field, yet alone between games played at different venues. Why don't they do this, you may be asking? And the reason is a lot of the software so far has been focused on individual players looking at things such as distance, speed, intensity. And the nice thing about those metrics is none of them depend on your position relative to the field. These are all things that can be calculated independently of the field. However, I would argue if you're interested in strategic analysis of the team, then you really need to know as one of your features where the player is relative to the field so we can look at how that's actually affecting the game. There was one system that can do what we want, which at least from what it seems from the limited amount of advertising that Catapult makes public, and that's Catapult Clear Sky, which does seem to be generating maps with the players in local XY coordinates relative to the field. However, they, their most recent technology doesn't actually use the GPS system. Instead, you have to set up tracking beacons around the field, and then it uses radio waves to triangulate where the players are. Now the issue is this technology is highly expensive and costs elite teams around $100,000 per year. My question is, can we get that same strategic information looking at where the team is relative to the field using just ordinary GPS tracking data raw latitude longitude times and then use software to do the rest without the need to install tracking beacons so given the limitations of existing sport analysis software i decided to look at general purpose geographic information systems to see whether they provide 
the functionality, even though they're not specifically designed for working with sports data? The answer is yes, you can actually reproject the GPS data relative to the reference frame of your choosing using geographic information systems. However, I think you'll agree it's not particularly user friendly. Geographic information systems have the concept of a coordinate reference system. And there's many different coordinate reference systems defined for the different area of the, the globe. Attempting to create local projections that minimize distortions in particular areas. Unfortunately, since we're dealing with football fields, with custom rotations, there's not going to be any predefined coordinate reference systems, so you need to create your own. What you see in the center of this slide is the PROJ4 format that we could use to set up a custom coordinate reference system for a football field. We use the oblique Mercator projection. You've probably heard of the Mercator projection for world maps. The oblique Mercator projection is a variation on that which performs the Mercator projection at an angle. So for example, we could use the direction of the field as our new up direction. You need to provide the reference latitude, longitude, and an azimuth. Now there's a warning around calculating that azimuth because if you're reading that azimuth off an existing map, you need to bear in mind that the existing map may have some distortions, so the angle that you see may not be the real angle. To make that more concrete, in Google Maps, because they assume a spherical Earth rather than a lipsoid Earth, all the angles are actually slightly distorted. So there really needs to be some expertise just to determine the angle that you put into that Mercator projection format. And then once you've defined this format, you can use it to reproject your data and export it to, say, a CSV file. So while it is possible to perform these reprojections using a geographic information system, I think you'll agree it's not particularly user friendly, especially if we expect these systems to be used by sports coaches and sports performance analysts who need to be able to perform their own analysis without having to recruit a geospatial expert each time. Furthermore, the team plays on a different sports field each match, which means we need to define these custom coordinate re reference systems for each and every field that the team plays on. The closest I could find to what we want is a tool called Projection Wizard, designed as part of a research paper published in 2016. Projection Wizard allows the user to draw a bounding rectangle around the area of the globe that they're interested in. And then from that, it automatically generates that PROJ4 string that can be used to reproject the data. The issue with this for our use case is unfortunately it doesn't allow drawing a rotated rectangle which means if you want to use the oblique Mercator projection, you're still going to have to manually calculate that azimuth angle and then copy and paste that into the projection string. Furthermore, it's essentially just solving one step of the larger problem. The user still needs to take that PROJ4 string and copy and paste it into a geospatial information system to reproject their data or use the PROJ command line tools. In our system, we do away with the need for the user to learn the text-based projection formats by allowing them to graphically represent their coordinate system simply by drawing a line. The start of their line represents where they'd like the origin of their coordinate system to be, 
So for example, on an interactive map, they may click the center of the football field to be their zero zero. They then drag the line in the direction that they want their reference frame to be orientated. Finally, they add some metadata to that line to represent the time interval of interest. So for example, in the football scenario, they might use the metadata of that line to represent the start of the match and the end of the match so that all times will be relative to the start and then we can cut off any GPS movements after the end of the game. We could potentially also use the length of that line to represent scale information, but for our scenario so far, we've only really needed origin and rotation. So our system, which I'm about to demo to you, allows the user to import the GPS traces, draw the lines to mark up the reference frames that they're interested in, and then that data alone is enough for our system to reproject the data relative to those reference frames using the oblique Mercator projection internally to provide the user with GPS tracking data in local XY coordinates of each frame. And our hope is that that will make the analysis more meaningful and it will allow the user to do it without having to have a deep understanding of how these coordinate frames and projections work internally. Now, unfortunately, the football teams are quite sensitive about their GPS tracking data. They see it as giving them a competitive advantage, which is why I'm going to demo our system with bird tracking data, which fortunately works just as well. So in this case, I'm going to look at albatross tracking data. The user imports the GPS data. In this case, we have three albatrosses that flew from New Zealand through to Chile. The user draws a line to represent the reference frame they're interested in. Now that's a straight line, but it appears curved because the shortest path in this case is act from New Zealand to Chile is actually underneath the world near to Antarctica. They also add that little bit of metadata to represent the time interval. So in this case, when the birds left New Zealand and the approximate time of arriving in Chile, so we can cut that off. Our system automatically reprojects the data relative to those reference frames, as you can see in the panel on the right there. And with that reprojected data, the user can create heat maps or perform whatever analysis they want in that local space. So for just a few traces like that, and a single reference frame, our system is merely a convenience over having to describe your own text-based projection. However, where our system really pays off is when you need to create multiple projection frames. So in this example, I'm going to look at cassowary tracking data. The user imports their GPS tracking data and in this case, I've predefined the reference frames. And all I did is started in the center of the cassowary's feeding ground and then drew a line parallel to the nearest water source. Now, the reason I did it parallel to the water source is that cassowary are meant to be good swimmers and also the water plays a part in their mating routine. So our hypothesis here is that there'll be something interesting when we look at their movements relative to that water source. And although one cassowary's movement data is fairly random, when we have a large amount of cassowaries like this, we can quickly draw lines to represent all the reference frames we're interested in, and then we get a combined pool of all the cassowary's movements within that reference frame. So what we can see here is a heat map where we can see the cassowaries moved within about one kilometer 
but tended to move of their main feeding area, but could move up to five kilometers parallel to that water source. In our paper, we evaluate our system in terms of Bloom's revised taxonomy of learning, originally designed around educational criteria in schools. What we argue is that reference frames and projections are abstract concepts that require conceptual knowledge, whereas just simply drawing a line is more a concrete fact. And what our system does is reduces the barrier to entry by taking that abstract concept of a reference frame and turning it into something factual, a line that the user can draw. So the benefits of our system are twofold. Firstly, less interaction for expert users, especially when you need to set up a large number of reference frame, but also a lower barrier of entry, which makes our system better suited to novice users. And as you can see, although I've applied it to sport in my PhD and to bird tracking data into the demos, it could potentially be applied to a large range of domains working with tracking data. Moving on to future work. Currently, our system is dealing with static data sets, but there's nothing preventing our system from being used for real-time data with a little bit of additional engineering overhead. For example, if you're on a train, you could have your mobile tracking your real-time location, and then you could automatically reproject that relative to the station you're at, for example. Unfortunately, one thing that doesn't work well with our system so far is when you want to reproject relative to a distorted reference frame. So for example, in the train example, you might want to reproject relative to a curved train track or with vehicle tracking data, it makes more sense to look at your position relative to the road rather than absolute space since we're dealing with networks. Currently everything's linear, but if we can get our system to allow drawing curved lines and reprojecting relative to that, we could end up with some, I believe we could end up with quite an interesting tool. Another potential avenue is to remove the need for the user to define the reference frames at all. So for example, we could try to automatically identify interesting objects to use as reference frames. So for example, automatically identifying the center of football fields from satellite imagery and the direction of those fields, essentially auto-suggesting lines for the user. Or we could use principal component analysis and independent analysis, at least in the cases of sport, to identify axes that are varying the most, as those are probably the axes that the user wants to reproject the data relative to. So thanks for watching. For the full details, have a look at our paper, and my email's there in the paper if you want to contact me. Thanks.